this video, you're going to learn about the greatest integer function, and we're going to talk about how to evaluate as well as how to graph the greatest integer function. So let's dive in. So the first thing we want to talk about is the notation, like how do you actually write this greatest integer function? It kind of almost looks like that absolute value function with those vertical bars, but notice we've got like a double set of bars here. It's like a double bracket, okay? So that's how it's sometimes written. Sometimes it's also written like this with a little bar at the bottom. And this kind of is a little nod to the fact that with the greatest integer function, you're rounding down, or you can think about it as rounding it to the left on the number line to the nearest integer. Now, if you're already on an integer value, then you stay on that integer value. But if you're in between integers, you wanna to round to the left on the number line. So let's go through some examples. Say, for example, you have 1.8. So 1.8 would put us right about here, okay, on our number line. We're gonna to round to the left, that's gonna be one. If we have 0 0.7, let's see, 0 0.7 is right about here. We're gonna to round to the left, that's gonna give us zero. Negative 0.1, now negative 0.1, this might confuse some students because you say, well, that's only like, you know, just that's really close to zero, wouldn't that be zero? Well, negative 0.1 is right here. We round to the left on the number line to the integer to the left, which is gonna be negative one. Okay, and negative 4.25, that's right here. You're gonna to round to the left, that's gonna be negative five. So it's a little confusing because you might say, hmm, negative 4.25, but this number actually got bigger. It became five, but it was a bigger negative number. We're actually rounding to the left. So if you're not sure, go ahead and draw the number line and think about that rounding down or rounding to the left. Now let's talk about how do you actually graph the greatest integer function. What I oftentimes do if I forget how this looks is I'll just pick some integer values and some points in between the integer values to give me an idea about how this graph looks like. So for example, if I put in zero here, zero is gonna stay at zero. If I put 0.5 in, that's gonna round to the left on the number line to zero. 0 0.99 is zero. One is at an integer value that's gonna stay at one. 1 1.5 rounds to the left, that's one. 1 1.99 is one. Two is at the next integer value, so that stays at two. So graphically, what this would do is 0, 0 is going to put us right here at the origin. 0. 0.5 is still going to be at 0. 0. 0.99 is still going to be at 0. As soon as we get here to 1, this is going to be an open circle, and you're going to jump up here to 1. So you're going to have basically this horizontal line. When you jump up, now 1.5 is going to be 1. 1. 1.99 is 1. Uh, 2, you're going to have an open circle here, and it's going to jump up to the next step. So this is oftentimes referred to as a step function, okay, the greatest integer function, because it looks like stairs. So once you get the pattern, you can repeat it to the left and the right forever and ever. And just notice that it's closed on the left, and it's an open circle on the right, and this keeps going, okay. So now talking about how to work with transformations. So if you had this 2 in front, what do you think this 2 would do to our parent function, the greatest integer function? Well, what the two is, notice it's not grouped with the x. That means it's gonna affect the y values. It's gonna have the same effect. It's gonna multiply the y values by two. That's gonna be a vertical stretch by a factor of two, which means that these stairs are gonna be going up not one each time, but they're gonna go up two each time. See, that's at two now. So then I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna jump up to four. And I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna jump up to six. Or if I go this way, it'd be at uh, negative two. And that's what that graph looks like. Now for number six, what do you think this one would look like? Y equals, okay, the greatest integer function of X minus two. Well, notice the minus two is grouped with the X. That means it's gonna affect the X direction, the horizontal direction. But remember when it's grouped with the X, when we talk about transformations, it has the opposite effect. So it's not actually gonna go uh, minus two to the left, it's actually gonna go two to the right. So what would happen is we take this basic graph, we shift it two to the right, so it'd be one, two, it would start here and go up like that, okay? So everything's shifting right two. Now, let's take a look at some more examples. I'll give you an opportunity to practice some of these on your own, evaluating as well as graphing. So let's dive into that next. See if you can evaluate number seven and eight and then see if you can graph number nine and 10. So go ahead and pause the video, see what you get. We'll go through them together uh, after you're done. So let's look at number seven here. What do you think on this one? Well, let's follow our order of operations. Start on the inside, work our way out, just like as if we were working with parentheses. One minus 4.3 is negative 3.3. 3. 
but we're going to round to the left on the number line. That's going to make this negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is equal to negative 8. And you got it. How about for number 8? Start on the inside. 0 0.1 rounds to the left on the number line. That's going to give us 0. 4 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and you got that one. Okay, for number 9, how would you graph this? Well, you can see this minus 2 is not grouped with the x. That means it's going to affect the y values, and it's going to have the same effect, meaning the minus 2 is going to shift the graph down 2. So you, if you memorize that graph that I was showing you uh, previously, the basic parent function, remember how it's closed on the left, open on the right, and then jumps up to the next stair. So closed on the left, open on the right, closed on the left, open on the right, and you can repeat it in both directions uh, ad infinitum, right, forever. Okay, how about for number 10? y equals 1 half x, right, the greatest integer function of 1 half x. Well, notice the 1 half is grouped with the x, which means it's going to affect the horizontal direction or the x direction, but it has the opposite effect when it's grouped with the x. So our normal intuition would tell us 1 half is making it like a shrink, but this has the opposite effect. It's actually going to be a stretch. We're actually going to be multiplying by the reciprocal, 2 over 1. So it's going to be multiplying all the x values by 2, so a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So what that does to our graph is you're going to be closed on the left, but the stairs are going to be 2 units long, open on the right. Then we jump up to the next stair, closed on the left, open on the right, 2, two units long, closed on the left, open on the right, and you can go both directions here, like that. And you can keep going. So, great job. If you want to see some previous videos that I did talking about working with the greatest integer function, follow me over to that video right there, and I'll see you in that video.